Hey hello everybody, my name is Coolblown, I'm bringing out this video of me talking about a board game, and today we're going to be talking about Welcome to this classic of a game, I like to call it. Uh, definitely, definitely, this game's been out for a while. I think I've had this game since like 20, 2019 at least, 2018 maybe, going that far back. Um, but I've had this game for a while, it's 2023 at the time of recording this video, but I'm here to talk about this game. This is a roll and verb game, uh, not a roll and write, or sorry, a, <laughs> this is a verb and write, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I, I put right on the wrong word, um, but essentially what you're doing is you're basically flipping cards and then you're writing stuff down on the board, trying to score the most points in kind of a point salad situation. So let me go and start our background music before I forget, and then we will continue along. So the primary thing with this game is that this game is bingo with extra steps, if you want to call it that. And um, this game is a game that I enjoy a lot, just to give uh, a, you know kind of the quick and dirty if you if you want to watch this video for the first few minutes and then go from there. Um, I enjoy this game a lot. It is pretty simple. It's one of my go-to roll and write games or verb and write games to bring or to introduce people to. It's one, definitely one of my favorite gateway games to bring people into because it's a game that has enough strategy, has enough like crunchiness inside of there to make me entertain or keep me entertained. Even have to play it four or five times, assuming the people playing it want to play it that many more times. Um, but it's also straightforward enough to where it's not too complex for people who might be very new to games. Um, I would definitely put this game in the same alignment with a game like um, Project L, uh, where you're laying, laying down um, laying down tetrominoes, uh, tetrominoes? I'm saying the wrong Polyominoes, there you go. <laughs> where, you, where you put down polyominoes on the board and kind of fill in the spaces. Um, I'd also put this in a similar category, not the same, but a similar category as a game like Code Names in general as a nice introduction gateway game. So overall, I am a huge fan of this game. Um, I do I do think this one, I think I might've said previously in the past that I, I'd rather play Ganjong Clever than this, but I think I'd rather play this in Ganjong Clever, which I have Ganjong Clever right here, or Ganshun Clever, or, or That's So Clever. This is like an old ancient version too. And then I got both of these around the same time. Uh, at any rate, let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the review though, for those who want to see more in depth information. Um, yeah, so Welcome To, as I mentioned before, is a game to where you're essentially, uh, you have a sheet, uh, here's an empty one here. You have a sheet and on that sheet, you're going to be basically doing bingo stuff with your bingo friends. And that's gonna come from a stack of cards. Assuming you're playing multiplayer, you're gonna have a stack of cards. And from the stack of cards, you're gonna be flipping them like so and you're going to choose a pair and based on the pair you're going to be able to take the pair and do certain things with it i'm not here to explain the entire game if you want to see ex explanation of the rules either solo or with multiplayer i do have two other videos where i did a solo playthrough and i did a community uh, multiplayer playthrough and both of those explain the rules um i think i explained the rules a little bit more in depth on the uh, multiplayer one and i did a rolling start with a solo one since i was playing solo um, but that goes a long way to say that if you are playing or if you do want to know how to play the game then go check out those videos uh, or check out any of the many other plethora of videos that exist explaining this game um but that said um i would essentially take let me get a sheet that um i thought i had a spare sheet somewhere oh that is a spare sheet <laughs> lol um so essentially what you would do is you would take this uh pairing that you have and then you write down what you want so let's say i wanted to do the one park for instance so write down the number one in one of these spaces any one of these spaces i want i could put the one here for one two or one there and then i mark out the park because that's what that power does and there's six such powers that do different things once again i'm not going to explain everything but i'll explain what we have in front of us uh the numbers go from lowest to highest so they go in ascending order so if i had put the one here instead of putting the one down here then i would be in trouble filling in the rest of these spaces it would be pretty difficult it's possible but it'd be pretty difficult to fill in the rest of those spaces so it behooves you usually to put your lower numbers to the left and your higher numbers to the right side and the goal of all this is to basically try to get yourself some points so you get points based on how many parks you have marked off and this is like the point salad situation down here but you get points based on how many parks you have you get points based on how many pools you successfully install you get points based on how many construction workers you successfully hire and utilize in your building you get points based on the size of your housing units uh times a multiplier based on the real estate value and that's determined by um the real estate number that we have here uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later um or maybe not at all and then you can lose points by building too many duplexes in your neighborhood you can also lose points by not being able to put numbers getting errors and then if you're playing with the roundabouts you can also use roundabouts uh, to reset your numbers what i mean by that is that normally you go from lowest to highest but if i build a roundabout here then i can uh, reset at one going up 
and that can be really cool. That can let you do some cool things. The more roundabouts you use, the more points you lose. So if you use one roundabout, you lose three points at the end of the game. If you use two roundabouts, you lose eight points at the end of the game. So be very careful about that if you're using that variant. It's not the base variant. I don't really play with that that much, but anyway, that's not the point. So I chose my one park, and then we move on to the next round. Uh, sorry, everybody else would choose a pair. Uh, somebody can choose the same pair that I chose. They can choose a different pair, but it's the same pairing. So they can, sorry, they, it's whatever pairing is showing. So they can do five fence, four real estate, or one park. I chose one park. Everybody else ch presumably chose, we'll move on. And then from here, we have more options. So we have four fence, we have three construction and four fence. So unfortunately four fences there twice. And let's say I'm gonna choose a three construction. Construction allows me to plus or minus the number by uh, zero, one, or two. So I can either make this a one or a two or a three or a four or a five. So let's say I'm gonna take it as a five and I'm gonna put it, let's say I put it here. Let's do five. And then because I use construction, I hired a construction worker in my neighborhood. Get to mark off one of those. At the end of the game, whoever has the most of these marked off amongst the players will be able to get the higher points. And then second place, we get the lower points. And then third place, we get the lower points still. And if you don't compete in it, then you don't get score any points. So that's an important thing to note. Moving on to the next selection of numbers. Since like I said, it's pretty smooth and straightforward. We have 11 biz, 11 biz, four biz, and one real estate. Now, one thing to note before I choose my number here, um, I do want to note that one of the clever things I like about this game that helps with the strategy because it is kind of a random assortment of things, like a random universe of things, um, is that on the cars, you do have what's on the back of them. So for instance, on this number, on this card here, you'll note that we got the number four, and then on the back of it, uh, sorry, in the corners you have the symbol, the real estate symbol. If you look on the back of it, there's a real estate symbol. So that's letting you know what's coming up. And that can be useful for planning out. Yes, you won't know what the number is, but you'll at least know that you have a chance of maybe getting something you're looking for, or it might help you plan out what you're gonna be doing a little bit better. So that gives you a little more foresight, and that's for the veteran players or people who are more uh, more looking forward to long-term planning. That can be really helpful and keep them engaged, so that's really fun. Uh, but moving on, uh, I'm gonna choose 11 biz just because. I'll put 11 here, whoops. And then when I do a biz, I will take a step back at my board, look at my board, anywhere on my board, uh, it could be here if I had numbers there. I have no numbers there. It could be here if I had numbers there. I don't. So I just duplicate a number. So I say I want to duplicate this number because I'm building a duplex. So I want to duplicate this number here. So one, and then I put biz, and then I mark up the spot. At the end of the game, I will lose points based on how high this is. So I'm currently losing one point at the end of the game. If I do it again, then I'll be losing three points, so on and so forth. All right, next selection after everybody selected, of course. We got all parks. So eight park, two park, 10 park. Um, I guess we're doing two park. So let's do two and then a park. Cool, well done. Moving on. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get to all the symbols so I can at least talk about them. Uh, we have eight real estate, nine real estate, or 14 park. I have no fences yet, but we're gonna talk about real estates. So let's say I decided to do an eight real estate like that. The one you use the real estate, uh, it allows you to mark off any one of these spaces here, and that's gonna count as your multiplier. So if you look at one of the finish sheets here, you'll notice that this particular person has marked off a few things in their real estate section, and that helped them get a, a, get a good bit of points. But if we look here, we see that this person has, at the end of the game, you'll, you'll check your the size of houses that you have of that type, and you'll put it here, and then you'll multiply it by the multiplier that's currently showing. So for this person, they have three size twos apparently, so let's check. There's one size two, two size twos, there's a third size two. So yes, they do have three size twos. So, and they got their real estate up to, uh, they got they, they upgraded their real estate twice for the size two uh, scoring. So they're gonna be able to do three times four instead of the base, the base of uh, their three times two. So basically every time you upgrade this, you're gonna basically increase how many points you get or your multiplier, and it's pretty nice. So doing the real estate here, the reason why I did that is because I'm, I'm planning on building a five. If the game were to end at this time, as in if the game were to somehow end miraculously right now, I will score nothing for my size fives because I need to have a fence on both sides. I need to have a fence on both sides before this is considered completed. So completion to be more specific, I have to have a fence on both sides and I have to have all of the houses filled in with numbers. 
and that's that's consider that that's what counts towards this being completed. So moving on, this will be the last one that we do before we just move on to the rest of the rules, or sorry, to the rest of my review, because I don't want this to be too heavy with the rules. Um, we have five fence, six pool, and eleven construction. So let's say I chose the uh, let's say I chose the five fence. So I'm gonna do a five. I'm gonna put the five. Let's say I'm gonna put the five here, and I can put the fence wherever I want. So I'm gonna put it here. So note that the fence does not have to be coupled with a number, which is pretty nice. Unlike the parks, where the park had to be in the same row that I put it in. The fence, I can put the five here and put the fence there. I can put the five here and put the fence there. I can put the five here and put the fence there. I can put it wherever I want. But it's gonna allow me to do some cool stuff with that. Anyway, all right, um, that's gonna be it for the really rough, brief talk about the rules. Uh, just enough, just to make sure we have enough context for what the rules look like. Uh, I want to go ahead and move on to talk about some of my other favorite things about this game, which is a solo mode. So there is a solo variant, as I mentioned before, I did a whole playthrough of it, so feel free to go check that out if you would like. And the solo variant is pretty fun because it gives you the a pretty pretty crunchy, pretty crunchy uh, playthrough um, with a good bit of challenge. So what I mean by that is um, you have a pretty fast setup. It's basically you need a sheet, you need your cards, and then you put this little marker here, halfway between your stack. Uh, you can spot it yourself, you don't have to be exact. You can be exact if you want to. And you get your three goals. So there's gold cards, I didn't talk about these at all, but these exist. Essentially, if I build houses of a certain size, then I'll be able to get certain things. And essentially, I'm trying to build up my housing like normal and score like I'm playing a, uh, a multiplayer game. Um, but once that card, the card that shows up halfway here, once that shows up, any of these goals that I have not collected already will automatically flip and become worth less points. So I can still score them, but they're worth less points. And then on top of that, uh, the game ends when the deck runs out. So once I make it through this deck once, then the game ends, assuming that I have not accomplished one of the other in-game uh, uh, goals, which is if all the houses are filled in on my sheet, then the game will end that round. If I have three errors, then the game will end that round, as in three times where I could not write a number based on the three options uh, before me. Or if I have completed all three of these goals already as an individual player, then the game will end that round. So so th those are those are the things, but like the setup for it is basically you set up your cards, get your sheet, shuffle this up, put that card in the middle, and then you're off to the races. Uh, then you draw three, and in a solo player game you do this, multiplayer game you do not do this, but in a solo player game you do this, I will choose one number and one symbol. In this case they all happen to be the same symbol, so I can choose any number plus real estate apparently. So let's say I chose the 10 real estate. Let's say I want to put 10, I want to put it over here. 10 real estate like so. And I chose my number, now I'm going to draw three more and do the same thing. So I choose one number and one symbol. So let's say I want to do three fence. Actually, I want to do, uh, I wanted to do three pool, but unfortunately I can't because the three and the pool are on the same card. I'm not allowed to do that. So I can instead do 11 pool though. So I'll do 11 pool, put it right there. Give me my pool points. Look at that, doing pretty good. And then you keep going. And it's literally just as, like a normal game. You're going for your goals and then you're trying to, um, you know, trying to get it before you get to the halfway mark so you can get the maximum amount of points. But otherwise you're playing like a normal game and you try to make it through the whole deck. Or And then once you make it through the whole deck, the game's over, you score it, and then you move on. So the simplicity of this game is, I think, its biggest feature. Um, I think the theming of this game, uh, you can kind of take it or leave it. Uh, for some people, for some of my friends, they've uh, called out a very important thing, which is that this game is essentially redlining the board game, or can be harkened to redlining the board game, or makes callbacks to. And that's not a very savory topic. Uh, if you don't know anything about redlining in the United States, uh, definitely go Google it. Definitely go look up the history of how redlining worked in the United States. A very important historical fact to keep in mind as you go along. Don't want to get too political here, but I think it's important to know history. Um, but that said, it invokes those things, so theming can be a little bit off. But I do think the theme helps in teaching the game. As in, when somebody's playing the game, they're trying to figure out, okay, why am I putting numbers in these houses? So, oh, when you put a number, somebody's moving in. Oh, that makes sense. Well, why, why am I duplicating this number? Oh, well, when you duplicate, you're building a duplex. Oh, that makes sense. Why am I putting fences? 
Oh, when you build a fence, you're basically making an individual subdivision in the neighborhood. Oh, that makes sense. So, so there's a lot of logical reasoning that corresponds with the rules, which really helps this game become easier to teach. Whereas something like Ganshan Clever, which once again, I enjoy this game a lot. Uh, something like Ganshan Clever, it becomes a difficult thing to teach because the way you score the sheets it's all based on just kind of some arbitrary rules. Uh, this is, here's a filled out sheet for Ganchon Clever. But the way you score in this sheet is based on the arrows. The way you score in this sheet is based on how many you filled out. The way you score in this one is you have to build in uh, a number greater than or equal to the number showing. And then you get the points based on the section or based on where it's located, based on the section. The way you put a score here, the numbers can be in any, any number going across and you add them all, you add the total up. The way you put your numbers so so there's this whole thing where it's like okay wait what does this do what does that do okay what why is this saying okay this is tied to what okay this is the white plus the wait what does the white die do yeah it becomes hard <laughs> hard to teach this game uh so much so that you need people to play it once or twice before they can fully grasp what's going on and even then they don't really have the full strategy to chat whereas on welcome to um probably maybe by round four or five uh, people understand what's going on well enough that they can make some really intelligent decisions and make some really good choices about what they're writing, what they pick, and what powers they're seeking. And that, I think, is one of the biggest boons to this game. Uh, yes, the theming, like I said before, can be off-putting, uh, especially if you think about it a little bit more critically, um, but uh, it does end up being a good experience overall for groups that are more serious gamers, for groups that are more casual gamers, for groups that are kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, it is a game that you can also, you can also get this game done in about an hour, uh, even with AP uh, analysis paralysis involved, you can probably get it done in an hour with a four player game. Five player, six player, you're probably looking at maybe pushing a little bit longer because people are being very meticulous with their selections. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun game. And also there's other versions of it too. So this is Welcome to Las Vegas. Um, I do not like this version for reasons I'll talk about in a second, but there's different sheets. So the game comes with a stack of sheets. Um, I've used plenty of my sheets just to compare. Here's a uh, new version of the game, um, which like that's the Vegas one, the one that I said I don't like that much. And the reason I don't like it that much is because I think it adds too much. <laughs> um, but your stack of sheets looks like this. So I think you get a hundred sheets. And I, like I said, I've had this game for a while and I'm finally getting, I'm finally whittling it down, whittling it down to its final sheets here, which camera's not gonna focus on that, is it? There you go. Yeah, finally get down to my final sheets there. So it's, it's not that big of a deal too, especially considering that the packs, if you wanna get a pack of sheets for this game, it only costs $10. Um, you can also print out sheets on a dry erase board. There's also a dry erase version of the game. So if you wanna use dry erase board, you know, save the trees and have a reusable, uh, reusable game, you can. Um, but there's different versions. So it's Welcome to Las Vegas. There's um, a, a sheet set for Welcome to the base game uh, that has Halloween decorations. There's one that has um, special stuff like a Christmas one. They have all the seasonal ones you can think of, like an Easter one probably. I don't know if it does, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did exist. And they give you an additional scoring condition. Like the, uh, the Halloween one, I think, gives you like candy and Halloween lights that you can get points from. And I forget what they actually do. I haven't actually played it myself. Um, but the main thing is that you can have different sheets. So that means that you can actually take the base game sheets plus those other sheets, mix them all together, and then maybe give everybody a different sheet. So that way, yeah, you're playing the same game, but you're scoring a slightly different way. Might cause issues with balance, but I'm not here to talk about all that. <laughs> I'm also just kind of here to talk about what I like about this game and why I like it. Um, it's, it's very approachable and it's, it's, the theme is not neutral, but the theme is not, you know, space pirates with with um, sharks around them, or, or mythical dungeon crawling with, uh, you know, with with lions, with with um, fancy spell powers. I don't know. <laughs> I was trying to think of something mythical on top of my head. I, I apparently failed that test. Um, but it, it's a relatively neutral theme, though. It's, that's, that's what I think makes it more approachable. So I can play this game with my parents, which, to clarify, my parents have played Clans of Caledonia with me. My parents have played uh, Parade with me. My parents have played Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition with me. So my parents have played a plethora of games. I also tried to get my mom to play John Company with me. Uh, it almost worked, but uh, we, didn't, we didn't make it through that game. Um, she, she ended up having a headache and we had to stop playing. But what I'm trying to say is that my parents are not slouches when it comes to playing board games. 
Um, but I mention them as a non-hobbyist board game players because they're kind of the barometer for a game like this to where the theme is so approachable that when I first set it down in front of them, they said, okay, this, this is approachable. They're kind of more into it than normal. Whereas I had to get a little bit more coaxing to get them to play something like Clans of Caledonia, or I had to get them a little bit more encouraged to play a game like Gaia Project. Um, I don't think I played Gaia Project with my parents yet, but one day, one day. Um, but yeah, they, they kind of they kind of took to the themes like, okay, is it neutral enough? They figured it out. Uh, you you know, put a number here. They moved into the house. Makes sense. Build a wall so so you can like uh, make your little subdivision. Makes sense. Uh, score points by hiring by hiring uh, construction workers. Makes sense. Put a number with a pool. You get a pool. That makes sense. So it became a very straightforward, approachable game. And I think that's one of the biggest strengths of this game. Which brings me to Welcome to Las Vegas. From what I read, to clarify. As you see, the cards have not been opened in this box, so I haven't actually played it. But from what I read, uh, yeah, I feel like it's adding a little bit more than I would actually want in a game. Maybe it's just more so me not wanting to sit down and learn the rules for this one too. I don't know. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, I, I think I think the complexity that this adds to the game is a little bit much. And I, I kind of feel the same way with Welcome to the Moon. I don't have Welcome to the Moon. I am going to get Welcome to the Moon eventually. Um, but the fact that Welcome to the Moon has five different sections or five different ways to play or, or five or ten, whatever it has in the box, that sounds excessive. Like, I like the simplicity of this, the approachability of this, easy to set up, same set of rules, play a few times. And speaking of which, uh, one of my favorite rules to play into this game, which is not required, not in the rulebook, but the rule that I always, uh, always put in play whenever I play this game with people, is that if you don't name your town, by the end of the game, you score exactly zero points. Which means that you get a lot of cool names like Blue Diamond, Workville, Catopia, Awful Lawful, Timsville, Homeland, Wakanda, OJ Town, Panic, Suckville, The Good Place, Parkour, Storesville, and plenty more. I have, I have a lot of ones that I can't show on, on camera because I want to make sure it stays um, somewhat neutral from the um, from the age range. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's cool to see what people name their towns. Uh, yeah, it's a very small thing. And yes, whenever I play the game, I name my town Acornia or something Acornia related, which is uh, Acorn and then like Acornia, like Emporia or something like that. Um, it's something I came up with a long time ago and it, it always stuck with me. Um, but yeah, I have all my Acornias here, which is pretty neat to see how many times I play the game because this is a relative sample of how many times I played the game, which is plenty <laughs> over the years. And uh, yeah, I think my highest score of all this is like a hundred and something. 111, I think 111 was the highest score I saw. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just a fun, fun overall game. And like, I can definitely play this a lot. Um, I think I did uh, put this as one of the games that I can play 10 times in a row without getting bored. And I think for sure, um, I actually started to actually try to do that. Um, I think I made it to game four out of 10. So I was working on that at one point. Uh, but then I, then I kind of got bored and I stopped because okay, I guess it's getting late at night. Um, so one day, one day, maybe I'll know, like if I ever do a marathon stream, I'll play this game 10 times in a row. But all right, it's enough of that. That was a video to go too much longer. We're just talking about Welcome To. <laughs> Not that complicated of a game. So yeah, so is it a game that I would play a lot? Yes. Is it a game that I recommend highly? Yes. Is it a game that I would um, remove from my shelf? No, it doesn't take up that much space. It is a small box. And also, if you do have the box, I don't know if everybody will have it the same way that I do. But what I do in my box is I modified it. I cut off the edges here. And then I made like a little finger slot and then I put um, Sharpies inside of here, thin tip Sharpies. You can also put pencils, pens, but I like to use Sharpies so people can see across the table what you wrote. Um, but some people like pencils because it gives them uh, anxiety to not have pencils. Also, it came with these nice little golf pencils. And by nice, I mean awful. <laughs> awful to write with, awful to write with. But hey, it gave you something, right? It gave you something. So just a little, little um, hint there for those who might be looking to store their own game and they're writing utensils. And then finally, uh, we're just gonna put everything back in the box so we can kind of see how it looks. And that's it, yeah. So definitely let me know what you all think of the game. Uh, definitely let me know if you all want to see me do a 10 game playthrough video, which I will definitely do, 10 game solo of this game, back to back to back to back. Um, I think it'd be pretty fun and pretty entertaining. And uh, also let me know, yeah, just let me know in general what you think of the game. Like I've played this game a ton. Like, if we look at all the sheets that I have, I think I've kept every single sheet except for maybe a few. Uh, let's see. Here's my stack of games. Oops. Oh. There we go. 
Yeah, here's my stack of games that I played of Welcome To. So yeah, so the game came with that many sheets, and these are all the ones that have been played over the years. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see that. These ones have been played over all the years, and then we have a few sheets left. So I, I do, I, I am due for a refill here soon, apparently. So <laughs> we'll, we'll do that eventually. But anyway, yeah, that's gonna be it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, let me know what y'all think of the game. Let me know uh, if y'all played along in my play along video. Uh, let me know what you did. Let me know how you did. What your score was. But otherwise, thank y'all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see y'all whenever.